Hello, Divination, and welcome. In this video, we'll be using transparent images to create beautiful call to action column overlaps with Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So, without wasting a lot of time, let's get started. We are going to start here by going into our WordPress admin dashboard and then coming over here to pages. So, here we just need to create a brand new page and we're just going to call this call to action and then click on use Divi Builder. So, this design is going to be built from scratch. So, I'm going to select build from scratch. And then I'm just going to close this for now. Next, I'm going to come over here to my section settings, click on background. And here we need to add a gradient background. So I'm going to come over here on the second tab, click on the plus button. And for my first color, I am going to add this color right here. And then on my second color, this is going to be white. So this will be all Fs. Oh, by the way, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using in today's tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. And also you can download this design on the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below as well. All right, so moving on, uh, let's set our gradient type. So here, by default, it's set to linear. Let's set this to radial. And then now we need to adjust our direction. And right now it's on center and that's where we want it. And then finally, we want to add our start and end position. So our end position here is going to be 50%. And our start position is going to be 52%. Next, let's head over here to the design tab because here we need to add a padding of zero VW both to the top and the bottom. So to quickly do that, just add, just click on this chain icon and this will add the value on the bottom as well. Now, since we're here, we might as well add our padding for the smart devices. So I'm going to click here on this little icon and on the tablet and phone, we're going to set this to 70 on the bottom padding. So I'm going to go ahead and break the chain here at 70. And this is also going to be the same for the phone as well. Now it's time to add a new row. So I'm going to save this, click on this plus button and the row we're going to add is a single column. And before we add any modules, I'm just going to close this and let's go into our row settings. So here we need to go to design sizing and let's start by adjusting our width and drag it all the way to 100% and then the maximum width needs to be 100% as well. Now we can add our text module. So I'm going to save this, click on this plus button and I'm going to search for my text module here and select it. So in here you can add whatever text you like. So this is the text that I'm going to use in this tutorial and here on the title, let's set this to heading two. So now that we've added our text, the next stage now is to go in and customize it. So I'm going to come over here to design. So over here on our text font, we're going to set this to open sans. So I'm going to search for the font here and select it. E centered. So I'm going to go ahead and set my alignment here. And then let's set our text color. So I'm going to click on this eyedropper tool and paste my color in here. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm going to link to the post which has all these settings. All right, so next let's come over here to our text size and set our text size to 1.2 VW. And for this to look great on tablets and mobile devices, let's click here on this little icon and set our sizes as well. So here on the tablet, we're gonna set this to 2.8. And then on the phone, we are going to set it to 3.6. VW. So let's go ahead and do that. And then back over here on the tab, let's head over to our letter spacing because it just makes the design look much better. So I'm going to go with 0.2 VW. And then I'm also going to add my line height and set this to 1.8. So this was our normal text. Now let's work on our heading two. So, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just collapse this and then go to heading text, click on the heading two tab. And here we're going to use a different font for this. So I'm going to come over here and search for my font. This one here is called Dop your one, I'm gonna select it. So our alignment here is centered. And this time for our color, let's use a really dark gray. So I'm gonna click on this eyedropper tool and paste my color in here. Now it's time to set our sizes. So let's start with our desktop size. So this one here is going to be 4.4 VW. And then I'm gonna click, I mean, hover over here and set my sizes for the tablet and the phone as well. So for the tablet, we're gonna set this at 5.9 VW. For the phone, we're gonna set it to 6.9 VW. So let's go back over here to our desktop tab. So as we can see here, things are very close to the edge here. So let's add a bit of padding. So I'm gonna come over here to spacing and add 212 pixels there to the top and then save. Now let's add another module, but this time this is going to be a divider module. So I'm just gonna search for it and 
selected. So first let's add our line color and this is going to be a dark gray. So I'm going to come over here to design line, click here on this eyedropper tool and paste my color in here. Now let's do further customization. So I'm going to click here on sizing. So our divider weight is going to be four pixels because right now um, it's a bit too thin. So I'm just going to set this to four and for our width here, we're going to set it to 9%. Now make sure it's percentage. There we go. And for the alignment, let's center this. Now let's head over here to our margins. So I'm going to click here on spacing. So for the margin here, I'm going to set this to about minus 40. Now let me just close this and take a look and see if this is okay. Yeah, I think that looks fine. So this is another way of actually checking it out because sometimes if you're on the design mode here, it looks like everything is way too close. So if you close this, it also shows you pretty much what it looks like. So that looks great. So I'm going to save this and then I'm also going to add another row. So I'm going to click on this plus button and this time we are going to go with three columns. Now, before we go in and start adding all our modules, let's go into our row settings because here we need to set our background style. So I'm going to click here on background. So we're also going to add a gradient on this one here. So I'm going to click here on the second tab. So click this plus button and our first color here is going to be white. So I'm just going to go to my recent colors here because I know I've used white before. Select my white and then over here, we're going to add a transparent color. So I'm going to go ahead and add transparency there. Right. So as we did before, let's change our linear gradients to radial. And then we are going to make sure our radial direction is sent set to center and then we need to set our start and end position. So for our start position here, we're going to set this to 42 and for our end position, we're going to set this to 50. Now let's head over to the design tab because here we need to set our sizing. So I'm going to click here on sizing and for the width, we're going to set this to 100% and then for the maximum width, 100% as well. Now let's head over to spacing because here we need to set our top and bottom padding and also our left and right. So for our top padding, we're going to set this at 22 VW. And then for our bottom padding, this is going to be 10 VW. And then finally, for our left and right, this is going to be 10 VW. And then I'm going to activate this chain so my value can be applied to both sides. Now let's head over back to content and let's go into column one. So I'm going to go to column one settings and we're also going to start here with our gradient background. So I'm going to click on background, click on this plus button, click on the second tab, and then we're going to start adding our colors. So my first color here is going to be a blue, paste my color in here. My second color is going to be a light blue. So I'm going to paste it in here as well. So this time our gradient needs to be set to linear and our gradient direction is going to be 38 degrees and our start position is going to be 23%. Now let's head over here to design, click on border. So here on the borders, we're going to set our sides to 2VW. But note that my chain here is activated. If it's not activated, it just applies the value to one of the sides. So make sure the chain is activated. So now you can see it has been applied to all sides. So let's head over now to our box shadow. So I'm going to scroll down here to box shadow and we are going to go with uh, this option right here. Select that and then let's now customize our box shadow. So I'm going to start here with my horizontal position and we're going to set this to six pixels and uh, for our vertical vertical position, this needs to be minus 10 pixels. And for the blur strength, this needs to be 50. Next, we're going to come over here to the advanced, click on visibility. And on the overflows, let's just set this to visible and also for the vertical. So pretty much that's all I need to do for column one. Let's click on this back arrow, go into column two, same thing. Let's go over here to our background, click on the plus. In fact, we need to go to the uh, gradient because all these backgrounds on our columns are going to be gradient. So I'm going to click here on this plus button to add my first color. I'm going to paste it in here. And by the way, before I forget, I know I've mentioned this before, but if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so let's go over here to our second color. And for my second color, I'm just going to paste it in here. And our gradient type is okay at linear, but we need to adjust our gradient direction to 38% and our start position to 23%. So like we did before, I'm going to click here on design border, set this to 2VW. I want to choose my box shadow, 
go with this option here. Horizontal position, six pixels is fine. Vertical needs to be minus 10. And over here on the blur strength, we're gonna set this to 50. So on this one here, we're gonna do something a bit different. So we're gonna come over here to transform and we're going to go into transform translate. So first thing, I'm gonna break this chain here and I'm going to set my Y position to 8VW. So I'm gonna come over here, set my value. Now notice the reason why I changed this is because if I activated the value gets applied to the X axis as well. So that's why I broke the chain here. So next let's over, head over here to advanced and here on the advanced, we just need to make sure that our overflow both for horizontal and vertical is set to visible. Let's go ahead and save. On my third column here, we still need to add our settings. So I'm gonna click on this gear icon, click on background, second tab to add our gradient. And then I'm just gonna click on this plus button. So as before, let's add our colors. So I'm gonna start here with my first color. I'm just gonna add it in here, add my second color. I'm gonna add that as well. So our gradient here is okay, a linear. And our direction needs to be 38, 38 degrees. And our start position at 23. Let's click here on design border and as we did before to VW for our borders and they need to be applied on all sides. And then the next step now is to add our box shadow, choose my style, set my vertical to minus 10, and then my blur strength to 50. Next, we're gonna come over here to advanced, click on visibility, and then let's set our overflows to visible for both horizontal and vertical. So pretty much we're done here. I'm gonna save, save one more time, and it's time now to add all our images. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button, search for my image module, I'm gonna select it, and then I'm just gonna choose my image. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my very first one here. I'm gonna go with this one, upload an image. And by the way, if you wanna use the exact same images, if you go to the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below, there's a zipped folder, folder where you can find all these images. All right, so now that I've added all this, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll click on the design, sizing, and we need to make sure we force full width. It's very important, so make sure you activate that. Now let's head over and add our, our margins. So I'm gonna start here with my top margin. So I'm gonna click here on spacing. And our top margin here is going to be minus 11 VW and we're also going to add a padding of 5 VW both to the left and the right. So we'd like to add a bit of animation here on hover. So let's head over here to transform and here we're going to go with the first option which is transform scale. Right so over here I want the animation to happen on hover so I'm going to click here on this little icon choose hover and because I want my value to be the same on both axes I'm going to go ahead and leave the chain up chain activate it and then add my value. So now it's on 120. So you can see here it expands when I activate that. Next, I'm going to come over here to advanced, click on position and for our Z index, I'm going to set this to one. So pretty much I'm happy with my design here. I'm going to save this. So to make things easier for me, uh, instead of adding all these settings uh, each and every time on the other two images, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to duplicate this twice and then just drag it over here in position. If it's a bit tricky to do it here, all you have to do is to come over here to expand settings, click on wireframe view, and then just drag it this way. So I realized it's much easier this way. All right, so back over here to our front end editor. Now you can see our image is in position. So all you have to do now is to go in and change the images. So I've gone ahead and added all my images. Next, we need to add a text module to this. So I'm gonna search for my text module and select it. And in the text here, we just need to add our headings. And this one here is going to be called life cycle. And I'm going to set this to heading two. And now let's go ahead and stylize. In fact, you know what? Let's set it to heading three. Right, so next let's stylize this. So the first thing we need to do here is to go to design, heading text, click on the heading three tab. And we're gonna use the font we used before, W1. And on the font weight here, set it to bold. Alignment, it needs to be centered. And because it's on a, it's on a really dark background here, let's set our colors here here for the font to white. I'm just gonna drag this all the way up and now you can see it's much easier to read. So the next thing we're gonna do here is just set our size. So I'm gonna add my size in here and then save. Like what we did before, we're just gonna duplicate this and add it to the other columns. So go ahead and do that. So once you've added your titles, the next thing to do here is to add another text module. So this is going to be our description text. 
So I'm going to select that and then I'm just going to replace this with my lorem text. But of course, in your case, this could be, you know, like your own text. All right. So let's stylize this text here by coming over here to design text. We're going to set this to white. So our text size here is going to be 0.6 VW. And you know what? We need to change our font here to open sans. So let's go ahead and select that. All right. For our line height, we're going to set this to 2.2. So as you can see here, uh, things are not set up correctly. We just need to add our margins and our paddings. So let's head over here to spacing and let's start with our bottom margin. And we're going to set this to 5VW. And then we are also going to add left and right padding. So I'm going to come over here and because I want the same value on both sides, I'm going to activate my chain. And now you can see our text is much easier to read and it's within this boundary. So as we did before, you need to duplicate this twice and add it to the two columns. So once you've added your description text, the next item to add here is our call to action button. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button and choose button. So over here, you wanna make sure you add your button URL. So I'm just gonna add a blank one for now, but in your case, you wanna make sure you add a URL that links to a specific page. So now let's go ahead and customize this. So come over here to design and make sure it's aligned center here before we start working on the design of the actual button. So to style as our button here, we need to activate use custom styles for button. So let's start here with our text size. I'm going to set this to one VW. Next, we're going to add our text color. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so moving on, let's add our background color. And for our background color, we are going to make this white. For our border radius, we're going to set this to 50 VW. And for our font, to keep with our consistency, we're going to use Dopio 1, set this to bold. And then for our icon color, I'm going to paste my color in here. Now, when we take a look at this button here, we can see that uh, it's way too down there. So we just need to bring this up a little bit. So to achieve that, we're going to use margins, negative margins. So I'm going to start here with minus 5, minus 1.5 VW. Then next, we're going to add our top and bottom padding. So I'm going to set this to 1 VW. And then for the left and right, we're going to set this to 4 VW. In fact, you know what? This margin here is supposed to be on the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that. So now you can see we have this beautiful style. And there's also something here that doesn't look right. In fact, let's remove, let's remove this border. So back over here on the button, move the border width. And now let's go to our box shadow. So here we're going to go with the first option. And now let's stylize this. So first of all, our box shadow horizontal is going to be okay at zero. The vertical is going to be two. And then for our blur strength, we're going to set this to 50. So pretty much this is now looking great. It really stands out. So that looks great. So I'm going to save this. And then all you have to do now is to duplicate this twice and drag it into position. So I'm just going to drag it over here, drag the other one. So as you can see, this blue here does not work with these backgrounds. So we have to go now and customize that. So I'm going to go back into our design button. And for our button text color, I'm just going to change this to match that background. I'm also going to do the same for the other one. So I'm going to go into my button settings, click on design button and change my button text color. So pretty much this is our final design. So make sure you go in and change these headings and also update your text. So you know what, we might as well go in here and change this. So I'm going to click here on life cycle and we want to change this to planting and save that. And then the final one is farm life. So I'm going to go in, change this to farm life and save that. So pretty much we are done. This is our final design. So go ahead, try it out and yeah, have fun with it. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.